Hi everyone, good morning. As usual, Carol's on my case to do a video. So uh, here we go, my apologies. I just come out here and work and I get to it and I forget to take pictures and videos. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna do a build video, but I'm gonna tell you some of the things that I'm learning. Yes, I can still learn things. We can all still learn things. So I uh, just thought I'd share, and probably a lot of what I'm gonna share is more for first time or early builders than those of you who have built multiple airplanes. You may have some of this stuff and discovered it already. So anyway, um, I, we're about 150 hours right now, 155 hours or so into the RV-10 slow build kit. And I have finished the elevators, uh, basically the empennage, the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, rudder, and the elevators and trim tabs. So uh, brought back lots of memories. It's my third time around on those. And uh, interestingly enough, I think I mentioned to you, I found the jigs. I found even the jigs for the elevators when I went back and looked. So I didn't have to make any of the new jigs. I really appreciated that. Even bending the tim, uh, trim tabs over on the trim tabs themselves, the end tabs, I had the little jigs sanded for those. So uh, hang on to stuff. You never know when you're gonna use it again. Saved me some time there. Some other things came in handy. This, this uh, bucking bar, you only use this bucking bar one time basically in the kit and that's for doing the aft spar outboard of the trim tab in the RV-10 elevators because it's got a little angle on it here. It works really nicely, but uh, yep, I remembered where I put that too, so that came in handy. For those of you building, one of the things I would remind you is make certain you go onto the van's website and print off any changes in the plans. You just uh, go ahead under the service side and look at uh, plans changes or drawings, whatever the case might be. Uh, you can be a little bit misled because uh, you look in your plans and the date might match uh, what you have in plans. But as you scroll through these, you'll see some of the dates change. In this case, with the elevators, many of you are probably aware there's a service bulletin on the RV-10 for cracking along this aft spar. It's a service bill bulletin 00043. And basically what you have to do is open this up and get in there and put some pro seal along that spar and replace any rivets and maybe even add some rivets. So you wanna make certain you incorporate that service bulletin into a new build. And uh, it is incorporated into the drawings online, so make certain you print those off. And speaking of that, I'm gonna share with you some tools that have come in handy uh, for doing that service bulletin. Basically what you have to do is lay a bead of sealant in along this aft spar, and my apologies, I should have got a picture, but you'll see it on the van's website. But uh, Pro Seal's really, really miserable stuff to work with. I hate it, no matter how hard you try to stay clean, you're gonna get it all over your hands and clothes, etc. cetera. And uh, finally, I broke down, I saw vans had recommended the use of a sealant gun, and uh, they used to sell a really nice cheap one for $19, but they don't have it anymore. So I went down to Spruce and they got a really nice pneumatic one, which makes really small work of these cartridges. You, you mix these cartridges and there's another tool you'll want to get. You can find it on Amazon. It's the little mixer uh, assembly for Semco kind of uh, things, but it does in fact work for the Flame Master cartridges as well. You can see there's a hole there in the end of the plunger. Because basically how you mix this stuff is you got to do it 30 times if you're doing it by hand at least, up and down and twist it. You put this on and insert it into your drill and then you can just spin your drill while you're moving it in and out. It works much, much faster. So it saves a lot of time. Anything about saving time is really good. So uh, one of the other things I will tell you, and I probably mentioned this when we were building the helicopter, if you don't think you're going to make mistakes, uh, you're just, <laughs> you're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes too. Every once in a while, no matter how many, I don't know, 100,000 rivets I've done, once in a while, uh, the, you know, something will slip, uh, maybe put a little smile. Of course, it always ends up on top of the elevator instead of the bottom, so it's going to show. Uh, as long as you know you've not done a lot of damage and it's just a smile or so, I've found that you can hide them really nicely with the Superfill product. It's an epoxy. You mix it uh, two parts to one by weight. And then it sands up really nicely, and uh, it'll hide that smile there. And, uh, you know, in one case doing these elevators, I had a couple of the flanges. I don't know how many times you look at something, you think you got it in there right. Uh, and uh, I go to put it together, and I go, those don't look right. And sure enough, the in inboard flanges here I had facing the wrong direction. 
Uh, it's riveted though, it's not bonded, so it's a matter of just drilling them out and putting them on the right way and then redoing them. So that came out all right. One of the things I want to share with you here are some of the tools. I think I've mentioned these in prior videos. You know, you've, you've got a pneumatic squeezer, a pop rivet gun here, a pneumatic squeezer. You got your normal rivet guns, a 2X and a 3X. You know, when we were building the helicopter, we really loved this 3X gun because it was all uh, uh, of the 530 seconds rivets, much bigger rivets. On the RVs, it's much smaller rivets, 1 8 and 330 seconds. So uh, get yourself a nice 2X rivet gun. I got one of the Pro Series, ATS from Aircraft Spruce. It really works nicely. But the important thing I want to show you here that I found really nice and, and, and is this lightweight hose from Cleveland Tools. Uh, and, and what you got to do, though, is you got to put smaller fittings on each of your tools so they won't fit the standard hose disconnect. You'll see here at one end of the hose, you've got the standard fitting. And uh, I don't know if you can see the difference in size between those two there. They're substantially smaller. It means a weight saving. So basically, this goes into the end of your air hose. And then these, you can just quickly put on any of your tools that you're using here. So that makes it real nice. So I think they send the hose with a couple of fittings. Order some extra fittings for all your pneumatic tools. I had to go back and get some because I wasn't thinking. And, uh, and then one other thing I noticed, um, my shop here is off the side of the hanger. And when you go back and forth between these tools, like you'll go a rivet gun, you'll be running around 30, 35 pounds of pressure. But these squeezers run up around 80 or 90. And invariably, when you're doing working on some of these pieces, you're going to pick up the pop riveter and do it. And then you're going to move to some a rivet gun or a squeezer and you got to run back and forth to the compressor, change the uh, air pressure and let it bleed down. So one of the things I did here is just pick up, uh, I think it's only a $20 regulator off of Amazon. I run my air hose in from the shop and now in the room that I'm working, I can just quickly change the pressure here. You can see that. So now I just leave the compressor up above 100 PSI and I can quickly change the pressure in this room. Let's see, what else did we want to talk about here? Um, on Hi everyone, thought we'd show you some of the dimpling things even I'm learning. Uh, you know, I've kind of done my whole life, as we've talked about, all my airplanes by hand. This is a hand riveter dimpler. I think Avery made it. And uh, I've used it for all the other airplanes I've done. And basically what you do is you set your dimple dies up in here. Uh, so they just touch. You adjust this. So they just touch as you come down. And then we're going to just put the rib in there. And you can see by hand, we're going to do every one of these like this. And if you see my hand working over here, it, it's, you know, it works okay. It does a nice job. But I have to tell you, my hand and elbow at this stage of life are getting tired faster. Well, maybe we can find a tool. Let me show you what we're going to do here. We're going to take this one out of the vise. And we're going to put in the Avery. Cleveland. 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 This is Cleveland. Yep. We're going to put it in the vise. It mounts in the vise very nicely here. And now we're going to grab another rib. This is so much easier. Again, what we do here, the, the Cleveland uh, squeezer here is nice and adjustable. So you just tighten this till they're tight. They're touching each other. And then start dimpling. So, so instead far, of instead of your elbow and hand hurting, your your thumb is going to hurt maybe. <laughs> I'll let you know if my thumb gets sore. <laughs> right now it's doing pretty good. <laughs> anyway, a couple ways to dimple, and same thing with riveting. You do the trailing edge of a lot of the like the horizontal and the vertical the same way. We'll just use this by hand and uh, rivet down the trailing edge instead of doing it with the hand squeezer. A lot easier. I think that's the majority of the tools. Can you think of anything else there, Carol, that I might have missed? Not that I can think of. Okay, so a lot of fun and uh, going to move on to the uh, tail cone now. And so we'll start to see some big pieces go together. 
Carol's starting to help by uh, pulling off all the blue plastic. That takes time in itself. And don't forget to mark the pieces when you pull off the blue plastic. Um, and then don't forget to incorporate the service bulletins. All right. Thanks for watching.